In Studio B now, Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, national champion at BYU, dual threat analyst. Blaine, I'm glad I didn't wear my green and blue shirt today. Do you have one just like this? Yes, you I do. Yesterday. I wore it's mine great yesterday. Seriously. Great I shirt. knew you had good but, taste but, but in you, clothing. Oh, we always, like you and I, we go, where do we go? I go to the... You, you go to that one place. Yeah, where we, is it we again? can't say Norsham Rack. <laughs> Free plug <laughs> clearance. We go to Norsham Rack because I don't buy stuff at expensive places, but I will go to Norsham Rack. Yeah, absolutely. And I always see Spencer there. He's like, in, and he's always trying on the same stuff actually, that I want. He actually works there. That's funny. <laughs> My part time <laughs> job at Norsham Rack. So I can hey. get the uh, 40% yeah, discount. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 40% <laughs> off already. Yeah. Our Twitter question today, you just heard it. What are your expectations or how do they change depending on whether or not Eric Mika goes to the NBA or comes back to BYU in terms of the Cougars getting to the NCAA tournament? And it's interesting because I said before, if Eric Mika comes back, I believe that this the WCC has a chance to be a three-bid league. Since we talked about that, though, I mean, Gonzaga, who knows what happens with them now? Like, if, if all the guys that have declared, like, if they all go out, St. Mary's is my pick to win the league. You know, and so, but I still think Gonzaga, they just reload every year. When do they not compete for the title? When do they not go to the tournament? So you just have to assume that they're in the tournament, even if they're the number two team in the WCC. And they'll use the fact that all of us are talking about them being the number two and St. Mary's being number one next year. So they, they probably just come back and win the title again. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're that good. I, they own it in Vegas, man. No, like, I know. So every year um, I have picked the Zags to win the league. Um, but next year might be the first year I don't. Because I feel like, hey, as long as they keep winning it, you got to pick them. But maybe next year I pick St. Mary's. With Mika back, I feel like BYU uh, can be a third NCAA tournament team. I really believe that. Without him, I just I don't know. I still think there's a chance, but it depends on the development of some guys. Like, can Yoli pick his game up enough to offset the offensive production and the defensive presence in the paint? That, that Eric provides? Can they get more consistent scoring from the outside? And can they be better defensively? Th those are all big unknowns for me. So I'm not, I'm not saying they can't get to the tournament without Mika, but I've got some real question marks without him. I do not expect Eric Mika to come back. I just get the sense he's going to go. Whether he's, because at this point, he's not going to be drafted. And he, but he could blow it up and maybe sneak in the second round, the NBA combine. What's your sense of what decision he could make? T to me, it's... I think in his mind he's going, am I old enough now that I'm a return missionary that I just need to go out? Because a lot of these kids in the draft are 19 and 20 years old, and, and he's 22. Is he 23 now? No, he's 22. If he was Lithuanian, he'd be a first-round Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> I'm serious. And, and so, so I've talked to a lot of NBA guys. When I'm around doing games in other conferences, I run into a lot of NBA scouts, and I, I just like an unbiased opinion. And I go, so, so tell me about Mika. And the highest I've heard is maybe 50. And, and then I hear, oh, he's 50 to 75. Now, remember, 60 guys are picked in the first two rounds. That's, it's a 60-person draft. So does he sneak into the second round? Can he move up from that 50 spot? I don't know that you move up 20 spots just because you have a great camp this week. I think that's hard. And this is a deep draft this year. And so, to me, one of two things happens. Either he goes to this camp, and the scouts have told me the thing they're looking for is, can he consistently score over length? They love his hands. They love his ability to run the floor. They love that he's got a defensive mindset and will come over and block shots. They feel like before his mission versus after his mission, he's a much better out of his own area rebounder. The big question is, when he gets against length, can he still be a consistent scorer? So if he's playing against a 6'11 or 7-foot seven, seven guy, can he be consistent in his scoring? If he goes into camp this week and he just dominates against other big guys, I think he moves up. Um, what I would love for him, and now here's my selfish person. I, I want somebody at that camp to say to him, here's all the things we love. We feel like if you go back to BYU one year and you can prove that week in and week out you can score against length, you probably move into the first round next year. If and that person should be Danny Ainge. Yeah, player. Danny needs to tell Danny that. should tell in Eric Mika that. Of BYU, <laughs> Danny, I don't know that he's going to get that advice. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know – so barring that advice, I think he probably is worried about his age. And can, can Eric play? I think he can play. You know, I think he can play in the NBA. Certainly he can play in Europe for as long as he wants to. Hey, it, Italy would beckon him back because he knows the language and say, come play here. So he's certainly capable of doing that. That would be there whenever, whenever. he wants, though. Right, right. And true. He told us age is not a contributing factor to this decision. And part of me does not believe that. Because then what is? 
Yeah, Things you don't want to say? Because remember, and he's second, hearing second. it from a lot of people, so it's probably we, factoring in more and more. Well, we, we've talked about this before on this show. Second round draft picks, they're not, that's not a given. There's not very many good second round draft picks in the NBA. Yep. In the NFL, there's tons of free agents that make it and make it big. In the NBA, it's a first round draft pick league because eight guys play. You know, maybe nine and you have on a good team. 13 to 15 on right, the roster. Right, on a roster. Yeah. So there's just not enough spots, and there's a lot of talented guys. So first rounders, because they have guaranteed money and second rounders don't, they make it. So if somebody takes a first round pick and Eric is a late second rounder or a free agent and they're in camp together and they're similar, they got guaranteed money to the first round guy. They're not going to cut them. They're going to keep them and they're going to develop them for two reasons. They got money invested and they don't want to look stupid that they drafted them. So second round draft picks, free agents, are an uphill battle in the NBA. It's just a fact of life. I think he has a skill set to play in that league, especially if he can develop his offensive game against bigs, against length. But, but we'll just have to wait and see. Selfishly, I would love him to come back because I think, I think they're going to be way better defensively next year. And if they can have that, that in front of the rim stopper like he was last year, in addition to the pieces they've added, that's going to make the difference for me next year. And we can watch Eric Mika this afternoon on uh, ESPN3 in the Combine. He'll be in the NBA Summer League, too. Uh, we'll be able to watch him there. And, and good luck, but not that much luck. Yeah, not yeah. Right. Will he be in the <laughs> NBA Summer League, though, Jerem? Will he be there? Yeah. I, I don't think he would be. I want Eric well, I'm to just saying if he, if he doesn't go to the, the oh, NBA. Oh, I get it. No, well, I, I think he's, yeah, I think he's going to pursue a professional. Here's the thing. He, we all know Eric. He's a fantastic <laughs> kid. Very unselfish kid. We love him. We want him to have phenomenal success with whatever he does. In a year. So, so our, our selfish <laughs> interests want him back here. But really inside, we all want him to do whatever he feels strongly yes. about. And we want him to yes. have wild well, success. Well, with the, yeah, for me in a year. Right, in a I year. don't want that right now. See, I want da, Jerem is, is, is his I, selfish I, self today. He's I'm, just him, his I'm selfish always, person. I'm always selfish. I have myself. <laughs> You put the face mask thing on the airplane on you first, and then somebody else. That's what they tell you. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Even your child. Before attending to your child, put your own mask on first. Yeah, exactly. So you've learned your whole philosophy on life from the airline yeah. safety message? Yeah. Wow. I trust that, dude. Doesn't everything make sense now, Blaine? Wait, wow. Yeah. Okay, I get Don't it. You then. understand I've Jerem taught so my much kid better. to that put just, it on herself. That just gave not me, me perspective on Jerem. I, I, now I understand where we're coming from on all this. Ben knows to <laughs> this put the me mask first on. mentality all makes sense to me now. <laughs> Russell Westbrook don't care about Kevin Durant. <laughs> I, oh I, this man, this whole thing is interesting because, I like, can BYU can make the NCAA tournament next year without Eric Mika. It'll just be a different situation. And BYU's done it. We were talking about BYU's done it recently without a post score. It's it's difficult. And BYU's uh, gonna have a new assistant coach, a new offense in theory a little bit. It's not impossible to make the NCAA tournament. It'd just, just be a little tougher, right? No, and they, and they revert back to what they really have done for more years. That, so and found success doing I, so. I'd like him to come back because I think they invested a ton of time in changing the offense to run through the post last year. And if Eric's not back, then I think they go back to what they ran previously. And they've been to the NCAA tournament doing that. And, and I think that, that Yoli Child is gonna, Child's is going to make a huge jump this next year because he's going to learn to defend. This always happens between freshman and sophomore year. He's going to learn to stay on the floor and not foul better, which is going to give him more minutes. He's going to have a bigger role. I think he's wildly skilled, unbelievably explosive. He has the potential to be a phenomenal defender, and we haven't seen his mid-range and long-range game yet, which I believe he has because I've seen it in practice. And so I think if Eric doesn't come back, then Yoli is going to really blossom. And if he really blossoms, then, then why not? back to the NCAA tournament. And, and I, like some, I like some of the new additions. I like Hardnett defensively because he's got phenomenal lateral quickness. I mean, think faster than guys that we thought were decent defenders, faster than Frank Bartley laterally, faster than Jordan Chapman laterally. Now, he's not as big as those guys, but this is a guy that can stay in front of the ball. And that's been BYU's biggest problem the last two years. They can't stay in front of the ball. So even though you have shot blockers, you get beat off the dribble. Now the rotations are in place. And even if your rotations are good enough to stop the ball and force a missed shot, your weak side rebounding. So the backside, the third guy that's supposed to get down, there's not there. They get an offensive rebound and they get a put back. How many times have we seen that? If you can stay in front of the ball two seconds longer, then your whole defense takes a huge step up. 
And I, I think that Hardnett can provide that defensive on the ball that we have been missing for a number of years. So why not? Why not to the NCAA tournament without Mika if they're better defensively? I think they can be. Dual threat college sports analyst Blaine Fowler with us on BYU Sports Nation. We are talking BYU basketball specifically right now. And I want to bring up a point that you just talked about, and that is that BYU with the last time they made the NCAA, NCAA tournament, guard heavy. Great guards. Kyle Collinsworth, Tyler Haas, Chase Fisher. Now BYU has TJ Haas, Nick Emery, Elijah Bryant, Zach Selyus, and you throw in Yoli Childs with that. Out of all the guys coming back, who's going to make the biggest jump individually? Is it Yoli? I, I think it's Yoli Childs. I think it is, especially if Meek is not back, because I think he's going to have to take a bigger role offensively, and I think he's prepared to do that. And I think he's prepared to play more minutes. So I, I think that he's going to be night and day. People are going to go, whoa. You know, everybody talks about his just explosiveness because it's – Eye opening, you know he gets the ball and he quick jumps and the ball and he's throwing it down and he's scratching the top of his head on the rim. Everybody goes wow, but he's a really skilled basketball player and he's going to work on his ball handling and all of those things in his perimeter game this this off season. And so so I think he makes a quantum leap from a young freshman to a, to a sophomore that's going to have a bigger role, and and it's going to be fun to watch because rarely has BYU had a player that athletic. You know, as athletic as he is, as explosive as he is, and it's going to be fun to watch him. I hope that he has a Keenan Young kind of offseason where Keenan was like a three-point a game guy, and then all of a sudden he's like drop-stepping, spinning, laying it in underneath. And part of that was because Trent Playstead wasn't there. Exactly. Right? So, so sometimes you wonder how to fill the void, and it's not one for one or A for A. It's A for B. It's kind of different. So th another guy that's been added to the roster recently, and we haven't asked you about him, I believe, Ryland Bergerson, 6'6 kid, went to a prep school, kind of a late bloomer. BYU gets him in April. Dad uh, was drafted by the Hawks in the NBA. What do you think of Ryland Bergerson? Very good jump shooter, so with range and a defender. So we're talking about two different types of guards. So he's, he's a two-guard kid. He even played the three, so he's a wing. Um, very consistent shooter. He's the kind of guy. So now, now you had Hardnett and him in the game at the same time. Hardnett is going to blow right by the guy that's covering him. He's an attack mode guy. He's going to go down. And then Bergerson's guy is going to have to come off of him to try to help. Defense is going to start rotating. And then Hardnett's going to kick the ball out to a waiting feet set Bergerson on the outside. And he's going to knock down consistently those jump shots. So now you get Selyus back that's very, very good at that. And now they're not tremendous lateral quickness defenders, either of those guys. But they're good enough defensively because of being 6'6". They can close out a little more carefully. They can close out and leave a little more distance because they're longer and can get a hand up and still affect a shot without being real aggressive to close out and, and recover and play. So I like his length. I like that he's 6'6". I like that he's 200. And, and I think he's going to bring a very consistent jump shooting, uh, another shooting guard. And so he's BYU's good at times from out there and then really inconsistent other times from out there and I think when they were consistent was when guys when it were, they were playing on attack either dribbling the ball off the dribble or, or getting into the interior and kicking it and guys were waiting or coming off of screens with open shots when BYU wasn't good was dribbling into jump shots last year and that happened too much I think with these additions we don't have to see that that much this year we're gonna see Emery as a catch and shoot jump shooter or as a spot-up jump shooter and not having to dribble into things and not having to have the ball in his hands all the time. And we're going to see Hawes be able to play. He had to play a lot of one last year, and maybe he can play less of that. He's a good penetrator, but he's also a very good spot-up jump shooter. So I, I like the mix of guards they have coming back next year. I think they'll be much better on the guard line next year. All right, we've run the gamut with BYU basketball. Blaine Fowler in Studio V. The one thing we haven't discussed yet is football, but we're about to change that.